Hello everyone, hope your Thursday's off to a fantastic start. Happy Friday Eve. I'm Coy Wire, here for you on CNN 10. Hurricane Ian, a powerful storm that hit Cuba earlier this week, grew to a Category 4 storm before making landfall on Florida's west coast. When we recorded this show, Ian was just shy of a Category 5 hurricane. This level of storm brings winds of over 150 miles per hour and can cause catastrophic storm surges, creating an abnormal rise of water levels. The scale for hurricanes, as seen in this animation, is based on a 1 to 5 rating dependent on a hurricane's maximum sustained wind speed. Officials warned it was too late to evacuate in some places. Ian already caused severe flooding in the Florida Keys and widespread power outages were expected across the state. Boats in some areas are ready to deliver supplies and make rescues if necessary. Hurricane Ian is one of the most powerful storms to threaten the United States in decades. Only two Category 5 storms have ever made landfall in the U.S. in the last 30 years, both in Florida. Millions of residents are under evacuation orders or advisories in parts of coastal Florida. We'll have reporters there for you all week long to keep you updated on the storm and recovery efforts. CNN meteorologist Jennifer Gray now explaining more about these powerful forces of nature. Tropical systems come in all shapes and sizes. You have tropical depressions, tropical storms, and once it is strong enough to become a hurricane, you have five categories, with category five being the strongest. The states most frequently hit by a hurricane, Florida, Louisiana, and Texas. But as much as we know about hurricanes, forecasting them is still a challenge. Just as we name each storm, each storm has its own personality. Like Katrina in 2005, which intensified rapidly overnight, going from a Category 3 to a Category 5. It became the fourth most intense hurricane on record as of that time. And the forecast track can change dramatically, like Erica in 2015. Or a system that can be viewed as relatively weak, like a tropical storm, could end up like Tropical Storm Allison in 2001. The remnants of the storm stalled over southeast Texas, dumping 35 inches of rain over Houston in just five days. The storm became the first non-hurricane to have its name retired. 10 second trivia. What sea separates Northern Africa and Europe? North, Mediterranean, Caspian, or Baltic? The Mediterranean Sea is your correct answer. Let's go there now where researchers are rummaging through some really cool stuff. fish sauce. We have uh, grapes or resins, we don't know. Olives, different kinds of olives, dates, figs, all the Mediterranean diets stored and well preserved. It's unique because, first because of its size, it is about 20 meters long and 5 meters beam, which is the largest uh, shipwreck we've ever excavated. And also because of its dating, it's dated between the 7th and the 8th century CE, which is the shift between the Byzantine and Islamic rule in the area. look at the history books, they usually tell us that in this shift, after the decline of the Byzantine rule in this area and the rise of the Islamic rule, then commerce almost stopped. In the emerging field of bioacoustics, scientists are looking at how to protect and conserve our planet by listening to it. Today, the Call to Earth series is headed to a biodiversity hotspot in India where a local researcher has developed a device to alleviate the growing issue of human-elephant conflict. Sunset on the border of Kazaranga National Park in northeast India. 
and former computer engineer, Sima Lakandwala stands in the field of a neighboring village, scanning the edge of the forest for one of her favorite animals. I went to Nepal as a very young kid, along with my uncle aunt, and saw elephants for the first time. I interacted with them, saw them. That itself fascinated me that there is this huge intelligent animal and that we know very little about. I started watching documentaries and what fascinated me about elephants is just the way they communicate. That childhood passion never went away. And now, as a conservation scientist, she's less interested in getting closer to the animal as she is in keeping them away. Human-elephant conflict is a big issue in India. India has the largest population of wild Asian elephants, around 26,000. They are an endangered species. And each year, approximately 500 people and 80 to 100 elephants die in the ongoing struggle to coexist. Here in Assam, deforestation has led to a staggering loss of habitat, driving the elephants out of the forest more often, just looking for a meal. 80% of the people in this area have agriculture as their primary occupation. And because of this, there is a lot of human-elephant conflict. Determined to find a solution for people and pachyderms to live in harmony, Seema founded the Elephant Acoustics Project. The idea is to understand the Asian elephant communication which are capable of high frequency recording. and use acoustics as a medium to mitigate human-elephant conflict. Her team of like-minded engineers are currently developing the elephant call detector. What is the frequency that you know about these microphones? Using a combination of hardware, a vocalization database, artificial intelligence, and local cell networks, the device is designed to detect an elephant sound, alert local officials of its presence, and then make the right kind of noise to hopefully send the animal in a different direction. We're trying to use a combination of all the natural sounds that are occurring in the elephant landscape. We are trying to use bee sounds, tiger calls, and leopard calls, which the elephants don't like. And we will try to do it in a round-robin fashion that, so that the elephants don't get adapted to these sounds. In Assam, there are about 229 human deaths that happened in the last three years because of some reason related to elephants. So we are trying to reduce this death. She's conducted an estimated 500 interviews and finds that the majority of people are eager for a solution. Well, namaste, like the elephant call detector. I have been working in the Kaziranga Kabyanglong landscape since 2015. And with any technology, most of the people are a little apprehensive in the beginning. But then they started working with the community, understanding the language, speaking in the language. I think they've been very, very accepting of new ideas and how they can implement it. All right, today's 10 out of 10. It's like Halloween come early in the French Alps. No treats, just tricks. Hang gliders, paragliders, and all kinds of high flyers went soaring through the air for a, a wide range of prizes. Thousands of people gathering for La Coupe Car, free flying festival. Pilots try to outdo each other by wearing the wackiest costumes they can. One contestant said though, the goal isn't to win. We're just trying to make a beautiful structure, make the kids laugh, and make the elderly people dream. From the French Alps to Ohio, Oxford, Ohio, and Talawanda High School, you get our shout out for the day, and you bring us our fun fact for the day. Did you know Ohio is sometimes called the mother of modern presidents? Ohio is the birthplace of seven U.S. presidents. Ohio, we hope you and everyone watching around the world have a wonderful one. I'm Coy Wire. Thanks for watching CNN 10.